and we had so many more people turn up and out for it than I even dreamed of. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we have like almost 40 people and like, you know, I don't. Welcome to episode 14 of Creative Type Podcast. This is how to increase your income as an artist. I'm Lori Rivera. And I'm Jamie Haney. And welcome to Creative Type Podcast. Woo! Yay! Oh, well, how are you doing, Lori? Oh, pretty how good. You how pretty was good. your vacation? It was, was good. Your... It was well, good. It was we spring just... break. Yeah, we didn't go anywhere. None of us We didn't did. either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just stayed here. Autumn had some time with her friends at the mall and different things. They've been playing, uh, oh, that Fortnite game. Oh, oh my gosh. The, yeah. Well, that's still going that. strong, huh? Okay. I guess so. I didn't really know much about it until. Oh, yeah. You know, well, yeah. Asher and his friends used to play it a long time ago, like, I don't know, four or five years ago. So it yeah. must still be going strong. That's, it is that's apparently. Cool. So her and okay. one of her friends, they were on it all the time over spring break. Oh, yeah. But. Yeah. Well, Asher, did, we didn't leave anywhere, but Asher and his dad, they went riding, you know, they drive, uh, yeah. they ride dirt, dirt bikes. And so they went about three or four times last week. And, uh, you know, my husband is a couple years older than me. So his back's all out of whack. And- oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, getting old is no fun, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, I am glad you're back because, you know, last yeah. week I did a solo show and that was a little challenging for me because, you know, I used the same, we use Zoom to record our, our so we can see each other. I went ahead and did the same thing because that's how I know how to do it. So I'm just looking at myself talk. It was kind of <laughs> weird. And, uh, and I apologize for everyone. My voice was very low. I am not a super techie person. I don't know why uh, the sound was so bad on it. Um, hopefully it's better today. And uh, I don't know if it was the way that I used. A, I used a, an old, old, old program called Audacity. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I've heard of it. So that's what I had on there. I tried. I've got my equipment is so out of date. It's not even funny. Matter of fact, I was just tell, talking to Lori before we started recording this that I may be looking into getting a new computer, laptop, or tablet. I haven't picked out which one yet, according to how much money I want to spend. So if anyone yeah. has any, um, any listeners have any advice on, I've always had an iMac uh, desktop. And I like those, but Lori, you've always had like a little portable um, laptop. I've never had yeah. a laptop. So I'm kind of maybe leaning that way. And the only thing that kind of scares me is that the screen's going to be a lot smaller. And I do do a lot of graphics on my computer mm-hmm. with Photoshop and uh, Illustrator and all that. So I do worry about that. But I still will have this computer that I, um, it's swapping out. This computer is... 2015 the one I'm using right now the one behind it I have two the the old one in my studio is 2008 and oh, wow. the thing is it still works but everything else has just given up on it like none of the system software will update anymore I cannot even and on my on my tablet I've got an iPad this iPad is like generation two. It's oh my so, gosh. It's so <laughs> old. And I cannot even watch YouTube videos on it anymore. And get this, I just found this out the other day. I cannot even use Safari, which is the browsing uh, application. Yeah. Cannot even go to Amazon and buy anything on it anymore. Oh no. <laughs> Can you believe that? I can't believe that. I was shocked. Oh my gosh. So my yeah, staff sounds is like old. you need to. Get I'm going to have new- to gonna have to upgrade yeah yeah sounds like you oh, new devices i do i do all right and so I, what are we talking about this week oh i'm sorry oh Go i ahead. was just gonna say i want to get a new ipad i want an ipad pro because i want to do some digital painting this summer again i'm thinking about making digital painting my summer gig oh that'll because, be fun you know oh let's talk about your other couch gig <laughs> oh yes yes you, oh yeah we need what, tell yeah. me what you're doing about this couch gig. What is this thing you do? Yeah. And have well, you actually done it? Well, I'm getting there. But, okay. you know, our friend Leslie, yeah. she's real big on this wool sculpting. Yes. She's on yes. her couch and in the evenings mm-hmm. and stuff. And she's always, she always has her hands in tons of different projects, Something. you know. Yeah. 
But right. she had kind of inspired me to get something going that I can do in the on the couch in the evenings while we're watching TV or whatever. Because, you know, with the cats and everything, I can't paint in the living room. They'd be no. on the paint. They'd be. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It would be a nightmare. That'd so, just be an accident waiting to happen. I know, right? Which they don't come in my studio either. Now, I know your cats come in your studio, but I don't. They do. Yeah. I don't let them in mine. I just. Yeah. I, yeah. But anyway, um. Yeah, so I got some watercolors. I got some like, you know, those like uh, canvases. They're like canvases that you can get with like the embroidery type uh, cloth fabric or whatever on them. I got okay. some of those. Like it's got a I weave, got... a loose weave yes, on it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got some of those and I got some embroidery floss. So I'm going to do some mixed media thread painting. Oh, that sounds and fun. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Oh, I, that just, does sound I have fun. it. I bought all the stuff. I just haven't tried it yet. So okay. you basically okay. just take some watercolors and and paint, do some painting on there on the fabric yeah. and then kind of embellish it with uh, the embroidery floss. So oh, cool. I, so yeah, I, I'm one to try well, that, that could open that could open a whole new media for you. You never know. Yeah. Of course, if this is just your hobby. You know, I, do you even want to mix the two? You know, I don't know. Well, right, we'll just have right. to see. You'll have to let us know how that goes. Now, when I'm on the couch, I'm in a vegetative state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you get the energy, but by the time I sit down, no, that's it. You know, I'm watching episodes of Evil or uh, Sneaky Pete. <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, the, the one we just finished up was The Last of Us. Oh, my gosh, that was so good. I loved it. Anyway, so what it. else? Oh, you haven't? It was on yeah. um, Paramount Plus. Okay. It was, I think it was Paramount Plus. No, I think I'm wrong on that. I can't remember where it's at. Anyway, it was it was really good. It was based on a video game. Oh. It was, it was kind of a zombie apocalypse type-ish, but it was it had a different swing to it. It was mm -hmm. it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Oh. Daryl did too. So what was, before I interrupted you, what, what were you saying that you were? doing before the before the couch the couch hobby oh the digital painting yes the digital painting yes yeah, yeah. so oh, now, about... don't you yeah don't you already have an ipad though well i do but you know i just have like the basic ipad and it okay. the resolution is terrible for your digital painting oh. on there it only creates okay. files that are like i don't remember exactly what they are but they're only like 800 by 800 pixels or something like that so oh, yeah was, you've told it's, me it's that it's really before. low I can't remember yeah. exactly what it is but it's not good for doing like uh you know if you want to print them out big yeah so yeah, so well, I, yeah I and really, if you're going to go to the trouble you want to be able to print them right. out at a decent size right, right at least right. like I would say at least a 16 by 20 oh yeah or an 11 by 14 or something you know yeah. you figure prints I don't know. I guess the, unless they're getting them printed on a canvas, right. which kind of leads me. Hey, what's our uh, topic today? How to increase income as an artist. So yes. that kind of leads right into what we're talking about. Uh, and you're doing the digital painting. So do you want to lead with that one? Was uh, that on your sure. list or was that on my list? Sure. <laughs> uh, well, digital painting wasn't on my list. Actually, the oh. first thing, but that's, you could do that though. You could generate extra income through digital oh, for sure. painting. Yeah. I have actually sold some prints. Yeah, I know my, you have. My, my digital work. Yes. Uh, I think just the only one I've sold is the Ruth Bader Ginsburg one that mm -hmm. I did last year. But, you know, I've sold like four of them, four of those prints. So... And actually you have, this is probably on your list, but all this other digital work that you did that you're selling as digital files. Those, oh yeah. Yeah. On, the the lists Etsy. and yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead? You've already spilled the beans on Etsy. So you lead with that sure. one if you don't. Sure. Go ahead. All right. So last year I decided to get on Etsy and tried to sell some color by number uh, books and I made these files. I converted my paintings into color by number files and put like 25 of them together into a booklet. And I threw mm -hmm. them on Etsy and, you know, tried to sell some of those. I don't know how many I've sold, but it was, it was going pretty good there. Uh, yeah. you know, up until about Christmas, uh, then it slowed down in January and February. And then I sold one a couple weeks ago, you know, it's kind of a hit and miss. Uh, it right. was a lot busier during the holiday season. But well, anyway, maybe it's so, going to be a seasonal item. 
Maybe so. so yeah. And now to clarify, you're not just throwing all your paintings on there. These are select paintings right. that you're allowing other people to use to paint. And yeah, right. you're not taking your your high end abstracts and, and right. doing that. They're, right. they're yeah. mostly like my small six by six little mm -hmm. kind of like little studies mm -hmm. and like some of my 12 by 12s and 10 by 10s. But like I, mm -hmm. I categorized them like I did like birds, flowers and landscapes. And then I had mm -hmm. one for food and drink. Yeah, so I have two of them on there. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay, so was that it for Etsy then? What I what think so. You have you had the other stuff. Tell well, you, you I have, have made digital, those lists, digital products. Yeah, yeah, I have digital downloads on there also. The only other thing I have on there right now is, like I said, the digital downloads. So like, okay. you can download some of my art as digital files and then print them off. But now you were also catering to artists. Do you still have those up? Yeah. No, I don't. Oh, you took I them down. Know. Yeah, I took them down because I didn't oh, think okay. it really fit in with the rest of my stuff. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of going for a theme there. Mm-hmm. All right. So the reason why we're talking about this on this episode is because the one before last, episode 12, I was kind of boohooing about, oh, my year is not that great, blah, blah, poor me, whatever. Uh, and it has since turned around. <laughs> thankfully I'm so glad to say but it got us to think and and we even mentioned it on that podcast hey we should talk about ways to increase our art and mm -hmm. that's where this this podcast has spawned from so I will say what changed me and my situation was we had our pop-up and we haven't even talked about our pop-up yeah yet. so uh, it was great and we had uh, so many more people turn up and out for it than I even dreamed of. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we have like almost 40 people and like, you know, hours? I don't, I know I that. That's what Did it was. you get the list? The sign I up do sheet? Have, I do guess have list? it. Yes. I don't, I have not seen it. And it's basically the same as the emails pretty okay. much. Well, maybe you could just take a picture of it yeah. and, and send it to us. Cause I'd like yeah. to like to see that. And then we can judge that because we are already planning on having another one because it was so successful. Oh yeah. This was the most successful thing that I've done ever. What about you? Uh, for the amount of time that we had for the involved? amount of time, yes. For the yeah, amount of time, it right. was a, right. what was it? Two hours. Right. Two well, hours. And the planning time the <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh the planning time we had in it wasn't just enormous. Exorbitant. Either. No. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It was kind of like a really condensed art show, art festival. Right. But we drug all our stuff in. And had a very short window of time where people could come and look at our stuff and buy from us. And then it was over and we took it all home and it was good. It was great. Now we paid more for the, the place, but with three of us pitching in, the cost went to basically the, the cost of an outdoor show. Right. For me, I thought, you know, I, I just can compare it to Funk in the City. What mm -hmm. it turned out to be, I like I don't know. Like 60, 70, 60 something. Yeah, like dollars. 70 bucks. Yeah, yeah. I think it was and, like 180, wasn't it? I think for the room. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And now that can always change. We just never know about that. Right. But, um, it turned out really well. Um, that was so that's been my best thing. And of course, I'm raring to go on another one because of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're looking at, at doing another one, possibly in a different place. In September. But we, yeah, but we we may use that same place again. It, it turned out okay. And that is another thing. Um, it doesn't have to be ideal. It doesn't have to be a gallery. We did not have art on the walls like we thought we would. We ended mm -hmm. up putting our big paintings, bigger paintings, all in chairs all along the wall. And I think that that turned out great. It did. I was, I, yeah, I, think I was really, uh, people could get up close to the painting. They see it. Right. We all sold some original paintings that way. Uh, so don't limit yourself to like, oh, well, this place doesn't have a hanging system. Well, it doesn't really matter because we yeah. found a way, right? We're artists. We got to come up with creative ideas. And we were going to take some of those. Um, what are those command strips, right? Oh, yeah. Because uh, this this place that we rented had um, brick walls and then slick walls in the hallway. And unfortunately, we didn't get to use the hallway, which would have been really nice. And But we were going to use command strips. But, you know, they're so pricey that it didn't make sense to use those. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's when we came up with the alternative of using the chairs. And I think that that was perfect. So now that we know that the chairs work, that just opened up everything. So think of mm -hmm. like 
Well, we're going to be looking at a library the Libraries. next time. Yeah. And I think of other places that have rooms that you can rent to have like baby showers and places like that. So definitely that is a huge income boost to have one of those. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and one thing that I think that was really good for all three of us is we were exposed to each other's collectors. Mm -hmm. I had I had my collectors come up to me, show me the things they bought from you and Vicky, and they were so excited, and mm -hmm. it made me they made me happy to see. Oh, you know, yeah. so you know, to Same see here everything you. that. Yeah, really, that's cool. Yeah. That's I and I love that because I'm not about you know. Oh, that's my collector. You can't right, have it. You right. know, <laughs> mine. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not that way. So that was fun, and and I'd have to say that that is my number one out of this list because it went so well for all of us yeah what's what do you got next on yours uh the actually at the top of my list were the obvious ones selling your original work and commissions those right. are obvious though oh sure yeah yeah but and then that... the next one go ahead oh well go ahead with your next one. Oh, the next one i had was publish a book so if you're an expert oh, yeah. in a certain area yeah you know, in art or whatever, just, you know, put together a book, self-publish it on Amazon. Or, I mean, even if you want to go to the uh, trouble of trying to get it in Barnes and Noble and places like that, you can do that too. That's a little right. bit harder, but um, I self-published a book. What was it in 2019, I think. And yeah, it's been a while. Since, yeah. Since then I unpublished it because I realized it wasn't as good as I thought it was when I first did it. And I just, yeah, I just wasn't happy with it. So, but well, that's an idea. Yeah, you told me that earlier. And I think it's like our art. I think you should have left it on. I think you should republish it because it it was what you knew at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's got it. You were teaching people if someone that's just starting out, they're not going to know all that information. So you're still right. helping someone. And I might also add to that book. You're not going to get rich on a book. Right. It's, it's not one of those deals that you're going to get rich. Um. Uh, just I a think, little uh, side. It's it's more of a way to command authority in your whatever it is you're doing. And it gives you street cred. And, you know, it's just impressive. Uh, it's kind of impressive to be able to say, you oh, know, I'm a published author. And uh, it feels good. And it, people are impressed by that. You know, it's kind of impressive to, that you've created something that that you can sell like that. Right. And I think also if you if you teach art classes, that can give you a way to reach new people who might be interested <laughs> That's on my in list. our classes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we think alike. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So we'll go from your book to my teaching art classes. Okay. All right. That's the next on the list here. So I had Dan, uh, another way to increase your income is to teach classes. So I wanted to say on teaching classes, uh, you can teach to groups or individuals. Uh, our friend Vicki, she offers events uh, to places of business, like for team building. So uh, that's a really uh, lucrative area to be in. She, mm -hmm. she offers classes to the schools and to uh, other places of business. And I think Her that church. That, yeah church yes oh my god she's killing she had like it. 90 something people at that i one. know i Remember? don't know how i don't know how she can teach that many people but she's she's up on a stage you know how the churches are it's a big production you know <laughs> they've got the the, um, the big uh, tv screens behind her and she, you know that worked out great because they could zoom in on her hand and all those 90 people got to see exactly Exactly what she was doing because it was on these giant screens. They had multiple screens in the sanctuary. So I think that, you know, that she really took advantage of that and was able to, you know, that's a big money maker for our friend Vicki. Okay. What else you got? The next one I have on here is bookmarks. Now, this is a very low, uh, low cost item, but you know, if you can uh, find a way to make them real quick, then, you know, you can. I don't know what charge, maybe five to ten dollars for each one, or maybe a little more, depending on how much detail is in them. So that's something I had on my list. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know you've just created some of those and had had a customer asking you about them. So another one I had down is prints, and I know you have that down too, Jamie. You do a lot of prints, yep. and I do some. Yes. Uh, yep. And you can also do print on demand sites, where yes. if somebody orders something from your print on demand site. They will print it basically on demand, just right there, and then send it to you. 
And right, then you get, right. you get a percentage. I don't remember what the percentages are. I have a red bubble site and I know you have fine art America and, and Zazzle some, and yes. society six. And also yeah. another one I just saw yesterday by a friend of mine, she's using T public. That's T E E public. I've never heard of that one. Maybe that's I a new either. one. I don't I haven't know. either. But uh, I'll, I'll check it out and see what her, I'll ask her why she picked that one. Because I know that she had Fine Art America and Society 6 as well. Now, I have run into all kinds of trouble with Redbubble and I think even Society 6. I've had trouble. And I don't know if it's their, their end or if it's my end. But I haven't been able to get some of my artwork to load up correctly in the right mm. size and it doesn't really do what I tell it to do <laughs> you know well, that's I not good own... no it isn't good no it isn't but so far fine art America has been the best for me that's what I have my most um, experience with I will say that uh, just this year do you remember those paintings I did with the love stinks oh, yeah. and uh, the hearts yeah, a... series yeah yeah I had a friend order a t-shirt now she's rather well endowed <laughs> on top and she ordered uh, an extra large I think and maybe it was an extra extra large I can't remember but she said it basically came as a medium like what she would consider a medium oh, no. so and she wasn't able to use it I said well send it back and she says nah she'll just give it to somebody so anyway uh, that's frustrating because you know they're not cheap yeah. when people buy stuff on there it isn't cheap and as far as the percentage goes I think you get to say on there how much you want uh, oh, some of yeah. them some goes by percentage like um, Zazzle goes by percentage but I think Fine Art America you put on there the dollar that you want like a, a phone case say you want to get five bucks for it, which they do not recommend. <laughs> you know, most of their right. recommendations uh, m recommendations are like a dollar or something, unless it's bigger items. But anyway, that is definitely nice yeah. to get that little notice on your email. You've made a sale or something like that. You know, that's just money that you're earning while you're sleeping is like uh, what a lot of people say. And I'm mm -hmm. all for that. But again, kind of goes back to your... Um, Color by number. You might not want to put your very best art on this print on demand stuff. I know a right. lot of people, um, a lot of artists, it's kind of split. You know, some, they do not want to offer prints, reproductions of any sort of their artwork. They feel like it diminishes the value of their art. And, uh, you know, I don't feel that way for myself. You know, I'm no Van Gogh. <laughs> so uh, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm earning a living. I'm trying to earn a living as an artist any way that I can. And for me, that means I need to have multiple income streams to make that work. And print on demand is one of those streams. Mm -hmm. So what about for you? Do you feel how I know? I mean, you offer prints, so you obviously feel like it's it's yeah. okay for you. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of prints. And I, I really at this point, anyway, I don't do prints of my big abstracts. Yeah, uh, it's mostly my smaller pieces. And, and even then, I don't I just don't do a whole lot of prints. But uh, no. I might I'm thinking about doing some limited edition prints. Uh, yeah, so that's I what I was going to say. That would yeah. be good. You know, have um, your abstract, since that's like your top end paintings, I think you could the, elevate those by only offer them as print mm -hmm. on canvas, possibly, or a certain size. It has to be a certain size right? Uh, or, you know, a G clay or whatever, something t high end. You know, you don't want to yeah. put those on a beach towel. So right. um, to keep it a little higher end. I don't know. Yeah. That's just what I was thinking might be a way for you to still earn some because, you know, what if someone loves an abstract and it's already sold? So you would be able to, you know, mm -hmm. make some income on a, a real high end print. I think it's, right. I think it just makes sense to uh, have that in the revenue stream, at yeah. least for us right now in our, in our career. It makes sense to yeah. have that extra income. And okay, I do, so, have, I do have Redbubble. I just wanted to say something real oh, quick yeah. about Redbubble. Yeah. Uh, I do have that, but also, I wanted to mention, too, that these sites, these print-on-demand sites, and we've talked about this before, Jamie, you can't just throw your art on there and expect sales to come rolling in. Oh, I no. mean, you, ha you have to. And, it's all and, on you. Unless, yeah. unless you are very lucky and you just hit on something that's a good seller, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to promote it yourself. Right. 
And that you yeah. have to add good tags and descriptions mm-hmm. and be very descriptive of your artwork. I think that helps. You can't just put on there the title of your painting, you know, like right. white, white gate or whatever it is, you know, and that maybe it didn't even have a white gate on there, you know, but you yeah. have to be. I'll put the colors on there and tags that describe that because, Mm -hmm. you know, that's all going to work with the SEO and what someone types in what they want. So it is all on you. And I will say that the years and years that I've had with Fine Art America, oh my gosh, probably more than, you know, 10 years at least, maybe, I have only gotten sales a handful of times that were not my already existing collectors. Mm -hmm. It is, but when I call attention to uh let's say I, they're real good about those uh, in situ you know uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right or not where you put your painting yeah. and it shows it in a room with a couch or whatever they have that on there so I utilize that and take screenshots and then I'll share that on Facebook or Instagram or my website or wh- wherever I want to and uh, it seems like when I do that that's when I will get a sale and it's not every single time, but this last time with this was a good example. I think you have to, you know, people don't remember that that's there. Um, right. You just have to, especially if they're having a sale, like they had tote bags on sale, oh, a couple of weeks ago. And I just did a couple screenshots of two tote bags and I sold both of them. I sold two tote bags with all just doing that. Now that's not a great sale. However, you know, every time they carry that tote bag, it's got my art on it and someone's going to see it and they're going to say, Oh, this is by, you know, my friend, Jamie Haney or however, you know, they word it. But I just think it's, it's a good idea. And, you know, you just have to do it. Just, you know, maybe you have to put it on a calendar, share your fine art America site or share your print on demand site that yeah. should be I think in our calendars and I should do that myself I don't I should follow my own advice <laughs> I'm gonna do that when we get off here <laughs> yeah me too put that on <laughs> my calendar is getting very full I don't know about yours <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so I, another one I had down was murals um uh, kind of borrowing this from Andrea Earhart she's got a great podcast what's her podcast mm-hmm. called do you remember we both listened to it oh my gosh what is it called i don't remember i don't know either i'll have Mur- to is it, it mural money no that's her book no that's her book um, and her book was really good too the oh wait the artist academy is it artist academy or is that her course i'm not sure but she is not only a fine artist, but she really has made a lot of money at her murals. Mm-hmm. And uh, she also, another one, here it is, the Artist Academy podcast. You're okay. right. Yeah. That's her podcast. Yeah. And it's really, really good. I really enjoy it. I She's very, it we've brought her up before. She's very uh, bubbly and upbeat. And I know she just had a little yeah. baby. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram or not, but she just had I a do. little baby. Yeah. I think it was November when she had him. I think it's a boy. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, so she's, I'm not sure if she's back at it or not, probably so by now. Um, But she also has a a course and she tells her people, I'm on her, her, not in her course, but I'm in her Facebook group and her, her members are doing window painting around holidays and Christmas, of course, is the Mm -hmm. big one. And these people are, you know, going there and working for two hours and they're making several hundred dollars just by painting with one color white, you know, like Christmas trees Mm -hmm. or Easter bunnies or whatever Halloween, whatever the holiday is, what you can do is go around to your local people and maybe offer one at a discount to get it started, get pictures, post it on social media. And there you yeah. go. I mean, that could be another income right. stream for you. It's a little more hands-on. It's not um, passive, but you know, I think that, and plus while you're out there painting, everyone's going to see you. So mm-hmm. make sure you have business cards, maybe a brochure for other business owners. I think that that's a terrific idea. Now I, think so I, too. Did, I have not done that myself because I happen to know I have painted a mural before in my son's bedroom. It's a lot of work. And at my age, I do not feel like hopping up on a ladder (laughs) and (laughs) painting. But if you're young or if you're not, you know, you're in good shape and can do that, then by all means that earn that money, you know, that is out there for the taking. I do believe it's a great way for um, artists to show their work publicly locally. And I think that is a Mm -hmm. really big thing now uh, we talked about 
social media and maybe having another podcast about or the relevancy of social media in the future, you know. So I think that that is a good way to get it seen locally. And we've talked about that, how it, art looks so different online than it does in person. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. And that wouldn't be fine art. That would just be real quick art that you can do. But, you know, not everybody can can paint that. So, you know, they need your services. All right. So let's mm -hmm. move on. What else have you got? The next thing I have is offering desktop wallpapers and mobile wallpapers. Now, you've oh, yeah. offered mobile wallpapers. Yes. Have you ever done desktop? No, I haven't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I just offered a – actually, I offered it free – for my mm -hmm. subscribers and I'm going to do this every month. And actually I can't take credit for this idea. I actually got the idea from Flora Bowley. Yes. You've probably I seen her. <laughs> yeah. Desktop yeah, yeah. Wallpaper. So a shout out to her for such a good idea. Uh, but she offers the, these desktop wallpapers with a little calendar on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought I'd try that, take yep. a great idea and put it to use. And uh, so I offered that to my uh, subscribers this past month for the month of April. And mm, I, just I a nice little that. perk. Yeah, yeah nice I part. hope to do that every month for them. But actually, I also thought, and this is why I wanted to bring it up, I thought, you know, you could put together a whole year's worth and sell that. Yeah, why couldn't you? As, a, yeah, as right. a download. Yes. And it would be a, a low cost, I think. You wouldn't charge right. a lot for that. However, you know, if you attach value to your art just like that, I mean, that's a member perk for them subscribing to your to your newsletter. Yeah. So, you know, you want to give them little freebies every once in a while. But I think see mm -hmm. nothing wrong with selling that batched, you know, 12 month or 18 month, whatever you want to sell. And I think that's a right. fantastic idea. Right. Because, I might do that next year. Yeah, if sometimes I think if you give something away, then it if it looks like you don't value it and so they won't value it. And we've talked about that before too. Mm -hmm. Which no, that's and you know, I have your calendar on my desktop still. I love oh, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm leaving it on there for April. Okay, so I have on here just have a wide range of pricing. Uh, that's gonna it boost your income. If you have something from as lowly as the five dollar note card all the way up to maybe five thousand plus uh, high end painting, that's gonna be. Um, I got good advice from two people, but I'm gonna name one, and it was Linda Blondheim, and she said always have a high end piece for your uh for the people that come and look at your art for them to see mm -hmm. and i think that's a really she had all different prices you know ranging from very low to pretty high and and the other person said the reason why you want to have a real high-end piece is to to make your other work that's a maybe mid-range not look so expensive they're like, oh, well, this piece is $500. Man, I don't know if I can afford that. But behind you, you've got a piece that's $5,000. So that puts things in perspective. Yeah. <laughs> so I right. thought that was a great, great uh, way to look at it. I love that. Yeah, so, I like that and, too. Yeah, that was my intention uh, for the show. I just didn't quite get it. The pop-up show, I didn't quite get one made. Which just I didn't out either. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> okay, yeah. have you got you anything did. else? Oh, I'm Something sorry. else I, I wanted to mention, have we talked about note cards very much? Because you mentioned the $5 note card just now. Because yeah. I know you sold a lot of note cards at our pop-up, oh, and yeah. I did too. And yeah. I think Vicki, didn't she have note cards also? Yeah, yeah. I think she sold quite a yeah. few too, so... Yeah. And she just had another pop up for last Sunday and she at sold the, a lot of note cards. Yeah. yeah. And I think I've mentioned this before at the last, the Christmas show that I did, Christmas at the cabin. Yeah. The majority of my sales were note cards. Now I mm -hmm. put them in sets. So it's easier, you know, sets of six for me. And I think yours are sets of five, right? Right. However you want to do it. Um, 20 bucks. I, how easy is that to spend? Here's a 20, you know, there's your, and, and they rack up. I, you mm -hmm. wouldn't have think so, but, uh, I think, you know, I haven't done the percentages, but I would say at least 30% of my sales from the pop-up were note cards and maybe more than that. I think it was 40% at the Christmas at the cabin was note card mm -hmm. sales. And it may, like I said, it may have been, been more than that. I would have to go back and look at my records to be sure, but it was a huge chunk. It was the majority of whatever the percentages was. It was the majority. Right. I think for sales. probably about 30 to 40, 40% 40 
of my sales mm -hmm. from note cards that are pop-up. So, yeah, it's an easy yeah. buy. People aren't, you know, someone goes out and spend $10, $10 now on a fancy coffee. So it's an easy buy. You get mm -hmm. these little cards that they can frame. And I always mention that, you know, because who right. doesn't need a little one for the bathroom or a hallway or just a little spot, you know, that they've got. I, I think post or uh, note cards are just a win-win all the way around. And if you're too bothered to make them, then you're missing out. That's <laughs> right. I look at it. And now, think about it. Yeah. Where do you get your, you get them printed, don't you? I get mine at Vista print. Yeah. Okay. But I think you get a much better deal. I do get a better printing deal. Them out not, where do you print them again? I print them at um, one of these print places here in town. Is it Staples or? No. Um, but some, similar Office to that, Depot. maybe so. And then I yeah. come out and they're actually really good. You know, you figure the little image is only what three and something. Cause it's got a big white border around it and they're just blank note cards that are just four and a half by or no four and a quarter by five and a half. So the image doesn't have to be very big and, uh, no, they, they turn out really well. And I yeah. buy, I buy envelopes, uh, by the box and I have sleeves. I used to have these little clear jewel boxes to give us gifts that way but that turned out to be really just an added uh inconvenience so mm -hmm. i stopped doing that I, i've uh, i've got just a few sets left with those gift boxes and uh, i'm just going to put them in clear sleeves now because they it's easier to mail they don't get crushed and uh you know it's not like they can't wrap if, if it is a gift it's not like they can't find a box themselves or just wrap mm -hmm. it the way it is Right. So yeah, no cards are a win-win for all of us. That's for sure. They see, they're one of those little things that you don't think they add much, but they really do. They do. Oh, and uh, you know, I want to add is this isn't on my um, list here, but I just we gave away our, as our pop-ups show special. We all had um, what did Vicky do it too? The the no yeah. card set. Okay, we if you spent over hundred dollars in I art with you. us, we gave everyone a note card set mm -hmm. uh, as a bonus. It's a gift. And uh, we forgot to do it. <laughs> so we had to, because <laughs> we were so busy, which that was a good problem to have. So we had to mail or deliver the note cards to the people who, who spent over $100 with us. Yeah. So one lady, um, I was questioning her e her address because I couldn't find it on Google. And I was questioning you. I think she's your customer and uh, your collector. And we were going back and forth on email, Karen and I. And I finally got it, uh, this set for the, the correct address. And since it took so long, I threw in a little extra freebie. And it was a magnet that I have bought these sleeves for that's a magnet. So you get these little ACO, ACEOs printed out. Yeah. And I get those at iprintfromhome.com. And it's eight on a sheet, I think. And it's like $2, less than three. I think the price has gone up a little bit. They used to be $2 for a sheet. So, I mean, mm -hmm. look at that. That's hardly anything for each one of those. There are little brightly colored paintings uh, that I choose which ones I'm going to print, you know, and then I cut them out and slide them into these little magnet holders. And they just, mm -hmm. she, she already wrote me and said she got them Wednesday which was yesterday. And she said she's thrilled, thanked me, and said it's already on her refrigerator. So yeah. and that's something that she's going to see every day that she walks into her, her kitchen. So, I mean, what better advertising can you get than that? Yeah, I got some of those, too. I, I took your idea and got some little oh, did you? And, yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. have and they, some of those at the confectionery right now. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, yeah. it, it's probably something that cost us, what, less than a dollar um, oh, yeah. to make. And it it just is a good I don't know that it's necessarily something that I sell very much of but it is one of those things that goes the extra mile when you want to give something special as a gift to someone it just mm -hmm. you know I think it really goes a long way to right. making the collector feel special and that's what we want to do we want to make our collectors feel special because we you know if we didn't have them then we wouldn't be able to do what we do right we wouldn't be in business right we would not right. we would not so we want to yeah. and, and talk about making people feel, feel special Linda Blondheim is the queen of that, isn't she? Oh, she yeah. She has these yeah, parties. She has great ideas. Yes. So uh, my next one would be from Linda. Thank you, Linda. I know you're listening. She sends postcards to her collectors and uh, to drum up sales. And uh, I know that she does this, I think, she said, four to six times a year. Sometimes those postcards are invitations to come to her 
parties, mm -hmm. which she has. She's a fantastic baker and cook and all that. I've had some of her food before. It's incredible. I got to visit her in her studio in Gainesville, Florida. And she makes, she used to be a chef. And she makes, or maybe it was a baker. I can't remember. I'm sorry, Linda. I know but she makes fantastic cake and has all this spread for her collectors to come out and basically just have a party. She has a cake party in the summer, right? Isn't it the mm -hmm. summer? Because I know that well, you I know. I can't remember, but I know she has yeah. those cake parties. And yeah. then she has like a, a chili dog or a hot dog um, party. And she always has desserts and cakes at these, but I think the cake party is a special cake party. And then she just, I think she has four of these a year. And uh, mm -hmm. she had to kind of quit for COVID for a while, but I think she's ramped back up. And one of them, she's working with a gallery now, and it's like called a front porch party, I believe. Anyway, such fantastic ideas. And we really were trying to emulate that with our pop-up. However, we ran into problems with the the owner of the business said the health department would not allow us to bring homemade food in, which is a big bummer. And uh, we had to have packaged yeah. food. So we had chips, you know, just packaged chips, single serving chips and water. And it was kind of not very exciting. And, uh, and Linda mentioned that the people that come to these parties, they expect to have, you know, these treats. Mm -hmm. And it was a, just a real shame that we couldn't have because we're all good cooks. Uh, Vicki and you well, and I. I don't know about me, but. Well, <laughs> You, you made that pistachio salad that one time. It was really good. No, I was good. just throwing stuff together. Well, that's all cooking is, basically, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, we wanted to be able to, I think, having little miniature cupcakes. Oh, wouldn't it be so that cute? That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. But we, unless we pick, you know, somewhere else that won't worry about the health department. <laughs> and I don't think, how many bags of chips did we go through? Probably just a couple. Not very I mean, many. Like, nobody hardly took any, anything. No, hardly anyone. I, I don't think they box. were very excited about those chips. No, <laughs> I bought a box. Of, well, Daryl's excited about them. Now he's eating. Yeah. Them. I bought a box of 50, and I think just about all 50 came back with me. So, yeah, that yeah. was kind of a, we learned a lesson there. Nobody wants the chips, but yeah, it was, I, think, I think it was nice just to have, you know, to offer. Right. But, I don't know that we'll do that again because it was kind of a flop with the I chips. think if we had cake like Linda, that would oh, go really well. Oh, if we had well. Linda's cake. Linda's cake. Man, that yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I've never had her cake, but yeah. Oh, well, cool. trust me. It was fabulous. She makes these scones from scratch. Oh, those I sound mean, good. Oh, my gosh. And she shares recipes. If you sign up for her newsletter, she shares recipes on every newsletter she's got. Yeah. So anything that I had had at her place was fantastic. Now I've only been once, so I haven't had anything. But I do read all her recipes in her newsletter, and they all just sound scrumptious. Okay. And then I have, oh, oh do you have any more? It's your turn. Uh, oh, I had one more. Okay. Um, our friend Vicki, she sells, doesn't she sell tracers now? Oh, yeah, or she, or that's she was right. Going, she was going to. Well, she was going to. Yeah, I don't know if she's actually gone forth with that idea. Yeah, she got she, started. She was going to put them on Etsy because yes. she teaches a lot of classes and she mm -hmm. has found that a lot of people like to have tracers. Yeah. If they're learning mm -hmm. how to paint, they right. don't want to have to do the drawing part. They mm -hmm. just want to start slapping on paint. So she right. offers tracers to them if they. it's optional. They can use it mm -hmm. if they want. And, and majority uh, of them take the tracers. Yes. Yes. What she said. And, yeah. Yeah. And so now she's wanting to sell those tracers on her yeah. Etsy site. Yeah. I, I seems to me like she did do that because she had bundles of them. Remember mm -hmm. now? But I do know yeah. that it was kind of slowing her down. Etsy is kind of a drag sometimes. It's really time consuming to get a listing. It that is. is one thing you have to brag about FASO. Man, that is a quick listing. Oh, yeah. I, compared to like even WooCommerce, which I was using before FASO, uh, mm -hmm. it it is a lot faster to get something listed. So there's a little show oh, for, FAS for FASO. I love my FASO website. I love yeah, is it. it. Fa FASO? Is it? I think I so. I think, I think that's how you say it. But My hick yeah. is showing. I don't know. <laughs> FASO. <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. But um, yeah, it's so fast. And and there's a, you can store a lot of information in there about your paintings. Oh, too. yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You've got those it drop downs. You just choose what it is and... You know, it's so easy. Oh, I know. We could do a whole show bragging about that, but we're not because yeah. they're not paying us. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we do like it. We do both like it. And I'll probably yeah. renew mine only because it's just going to be such a pain to change it again. So, right. No, and I see no reason really to change it. 
but it's the same thing. You have to do all the marketing yourself. Yeah. And it's just like anything. That's with anything. Like any now. website. Any yes, website. Any, it's like yes. That. It is not. If you build it, they will come. That is not no. happen. <laughs> you have to tell no. them and then hopefully <laughs> they will come. You have to tell them over and over and over and over. Yeah. All right. I got one last one and then we'll we'll be done. So I have an old school recommendation here. Now, I have done this myself. However, I did hear and it reminded me of what I used to do on a podcast last week. Uh, it was Corey Huff. have to give him some credit. And he had a guest on there named Gwen Seamel. And I followed her for a long time. She's a really good artist. And um, she said that she has quit social media, dropped it. And one of the ways that she's still boosting her income as an artist is she does this old school leaving business cards at places of business in her local area, grocery stores, mm -hmm. coffee shops. And she said she gets customers that way. She sells mm -hmm. art like that. So there you go. Local, I think, is uh, a lot of times easy to overlook because we're so focused on the internet. But I think local is a good place to start for sure. Yeah. And keep up, you know, don't drop it. I think you need to keep up local and whether that is uh, doing some um, local is a, a good way. And whether you are volunteering your your time or expertise or something, I think it's really good to get kind of known locally. You can kind of be the big fish in the little pond deal, you know. I yeah. think trying to be local is good. Unless you're in like New York City or some big town then it'll be a little harder but you know I live in a yeah. teeny tiny town <laughs> yeah I'd like to hear more about that so she just leaves her business cards like how does she do that like on a bulletin board or what well that's what I'm assuming I don't think she went into details on how she does that but okay. she does have a blog and I'll leave the link in the show notes uh, to where you can go and look at her website she's a very good artist and uh, she has some different ideas not ones that I totally agree with like she doesn't believe in copyright and she thinks that our, you know, and I don't want to put words in her mouth. So, but I have listened to her say before, she doesn't think things should be copyrighted. Um, so, you know, that's her, that's her thing. And she's, has every right to believe the way she believes, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want anybody making money off my art. <laughs> so I believe <laughs> I in copyright, either. you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we've got it all. Have we got any shout outs other than ones we've already given? I don't think so. Okay. So you guys, you're leaving us hanging here. We would love to have a shout out <laughs> to give to you. Now, and the way you can get a shout out from us is to, there's a couple different ways. We shout you out verbally. If you leave questions for us, email questions to us that, uh, that we can answer and use as a podcast idea, podcast ideas. And the top way to get a shout out with a guaranteed link to your site is to leave us a review. Um, and please do that because that allows other people to find the, the podcast and just shares uh, our knowledge with everyone. Not that we have a great deal amount but when everything gets added together you know it helps a lot of people out and I think that uh I think that it does I think we are helping people and I get told uh, repeatedly that people are listening and they love our podcast so yeah, thank you thank you to all our friends that are listening and anyone that we don't know thank you for listening too yes thank you so do you have anything else to add are we are we good I think that's it I think we are. I'm glad you're back, Lori. It was weird being by myself. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Although I could probably do it, and I'm sure you could too. But uh, it's more yeah. fun to have you to talk to. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy All it. Right. Okay. Hopefully our internet problems will go away. And uh, we've had to split this podcast up a couple times <laughs> because my <laughs> internet, that's the bad thing about living out in the country. All right. Well, until next week, uh, au revoir. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Okay. Okay, that was pretty okay, good. Okay, that was that was good. Your internet yeah. was pretty good. Good. Just good, that good. one little one little Blip. time at the beginning. Okay. I think that was it. All right. Well, hopefully it didn't screw anything up too bad. Yeah. And we we went a little over, but um about 25, 26, 27 minutes. Uh for that we said we were going to aim for 20. Mm -hmm. We went in one yeah, a little bit. That's but okay. not bad.
Yeah, I think we it's did okay. good. It's, it's about our average, right? Yeah, I think it, usually it's about 30 to 40 minutes. Oh, you know what we forgot? Let's add right. an addendum. Our aprons and tote bags. Oh, yeah. Can we add that? Wait, maybe you can even add that into the bloopers. <laughs> yeah, the just do that. We'll just do yeah. it at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to do just, it or what? Well, well, let's just, can you just use this? What? Yeah. Well, okay. We'll just keep going. Just keep, and whatever feels natural okay. for you to edit. Okay. Uh, so we forgot to add that. Uh, well, I forgot to add the links for the aprons and the tote bags <laughs> that I designed, uh, but they are there now on the show notes. And I have, if you're on Instagram and you go to our Instagram site, which is what creative type podcast is our Instagram handle. We have a link tree and on the link tree is a direct link where you can go and buy a, a tote bag or an apron. And I am open to making any other products that anyone would be interested in having. Now I have tweaked our logo and it says creative type artist on there instead of podcast. So it's not, you're not necessarily, um, you know, advertising for our show, but it's the same type of logo. It's the same logo. I've just changed, swapped out the word um, artist for, uh, well, I swapped out the word podcast for artist. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, they look really nice. They oh, look, thank you. I think nice. they turn out really good too. But, and then, you know, I thought of another one that would be really good because creatives, we, we come in all types, right? There's mm -hmm. not only painters, there's potters. Um, Potters, Sculptor. dancers, actors, Singer. singers. Yes. So we could, you know, it works best for a single word um, title like dancer, singer, actor, potter, however you want to be known. I can easily make that for you. And what this does is, uh, you know, we don't get very much money on this, but we will pay our hosting fees with this money. So mm -hmm. you'll be helping the show out tremendously if you buy one of ours and plus you'll get a cool little merchandise in in the for doing that i think i'm going to order the apron and the tote bag because they look really cool i think i think they turned out really nice yeah they did okay cool all right well there we go buy our junk <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> but it's useful junk right i mean who can't yeah. use it? and it's the nice big roomy tote bag i thought that you could yeah. put paintings in uh, whatever so okay art supplies yeah yeah anything on the go Dan when you're dancing shoes. Air painting. <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go there you go and who can't use an apron for anything right yeah no yeah. okay all right talk to you later see you next all week right. bye bye